Well, the second season is kicking off as we have now a moderate risk of severe weather as issued by the Storm Prediction Center. This is the latest outlook from them and this includes some major population areas. We're looking at Oklahoma City, Norman, Broken Arrow, Midwest City, Moore. These areas in a moderate risk which is driven by significant tornado probabilities. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the different characteristics of the atmosphere which could support this tornado outbreak in early October. Okay, the main feature we're going to be looking at, this is very important to the overall setup, is this intense shortwave. As you see right in through here, this is the uh, lower part of it. At this point, it is more positively tilted, we see right in through here, but it is maturing as we go through time. Because we play this forward, it is just ejecting into Oklahoma, right into here, shortwave base, spreading tremendous upper level winds and dynamics over Oklahoma into Kansas adjacent areas. And this is going to be substantially increasing the wind shear as well as increasing the dynamics that are reflected at the surface. Because right in through here, we're going to be seeing some strong, up, strong upper level lifting. And what that's going to result in is a surface low. And this surface low is going to develop through the afternoon and evening hours and spread to the northeast right in through here based on this uh, weather prediction center front map. That's 00Z. Zero, zero, As we head to 12Z, so that's the end of the forecast period, this is up into Missouri now. So roughly following the track of the surface low takes it right through here. And areas that are along and south of there will see very strong lifting and a strong low level pressure response that will result in significant moisture advection. And with that significant moisture advection, we'll get dew points that might be in the upper 60s, even to near 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is going to result in a substantial instability axis coming right in through here, right into central Oklahoma. Uh, the surface low is marked up here. And what that means for our Cape is we're seeing substantial cape of 1,500 to even 2,000 joules per kilogram. And this is particularly important right in through here because with the surface low, again, it's right in through here where I have the arrow pointed toward. Near the surface low into the south of there, we have maximized lifting. We have a pressure response that's generating stronger wind shear. We've got a maximum in moisture advection. And this is where things could become volatile. And that's why we have a moderate risk. Now looking at the wind shear environment, obviously with the short wave ejecting, we're going to be seeing a substantial increase in the mid and upper level flow fields, which translates to very strong deep layer wind shear. And as we see through here, through this run of the rapid refresh, that is quite true. Because by the time we get to 03Z, this is in the late evening hours, a broad area right here has effective bulk shear values which are in excess of 50 knots and even in excess of 60 knots in some places. That's highly supportive of organized storms. And furthermore, what is quite important for this setup, we have the low level wind shear. This is the zero to one kilometer storm relative velocity, which is particularly important and relevant when it comes to tornadic supercells. Now, this is where the surface low begins and we don't have very much velocity at this point, but as we head into the evening, we see there it is. The surface low is deepening right here and ahead of it through parts of Southern Oklahoma and it will spread to the east as we head through the evening. Substantial low level storm relative velocity which is likely to be 200 to 300 meters squared per second squared. And that's only in the zero to one kilometer layer. So that is substantial helicity, substantial streamwise vorticity in the lowest one kilometer of the atmosphere. And so that, what kind of environment is that going to give us? Well, a good way to look at that is with a forecast sounding. And we're going to take a sounding from right in through here. So this is South Central Oklahoma. This is within the moderate risk. Opening that up, we see a number of things which are important and concerning. Number one is this positive area that is right through here. It is pretty substantial, especially for the time of year. And that's a result mainly of this low level moisture that is very high, surface dew points of 71 degrees. And as we head through the evening, a little bit of cooling taking place at the surface perhaps, uh, and the increased moisture advection, we will see LCLs lower even more. So that will be even more favorable for tornado genesis. And also looking up in the upper right corner, this is the hodograph. This is a uh, representation of the vertical wind structure. And you see here from this point 
to this point over here, substantial curvature and substantial speed, uh, substantial speed and directional shear taking place, which indicates very large values of low-level helicity. And in this box here that I'm marking, we see that it's true. Zero to one kilometer SRH, 300 meters squared per second squared, which combines with surface base cape in excess of 2,000 joules per kilogram and deep layer shear of 60 knots to produce these concerning composite parameters right in this box here. STP in excess of five potentially. So uh, the model ensemble is generally looking at values of the STP, which could range from two to perhaps four and five. So that is substantial and indicates an environment as indicated here by the possible hazard type, potentially supportive of significant tornadoes. So what's all that going to do? This is the HRRR00Z run uh, composite reflectivity or uh, simulated reflectivity, which uh, I'm tripping on my words. It shows what based on the ingredients in the atmosphere, what this particular model thinks will happen. This might not be how it plays out exactly, but this is a good idea of what we could be looking at. So we head into the afternoon hours, not a whole lot's happening. We're not having the uh, dynamics of the upper level system and the low level instability maximized yet. But as we head further into the evening, there we go. This is where things start to pop off. Southwestern Oklahoma, intense discrete supercell development, potentially in a cluster of supercells, which is going to progress to the northeastward as we head into the coming hours. So this area right in through here, which is indicated by the uh, high reflectivity cores and the updraft listy tracks, could see organized supercells capable of producing very large hail and strong tornadoes, which could be obscured not only by rain, but also by the fact that we're heading into the nighttime hours. I apologize for that, that should not be there. And as we head into the later evening hours, this spreads off to the east uh, parts of Kansas, eastern Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, even into parts of Missouri, could see some damaging winds, even some QLCS tornado spin-ups. So this is what we're looking at, and this is a concerning severe weather setup because we could see significant tornadoes impact populated areas at night. That is never a good combination. And that's why you need to have a way to receive warnings, have a plan to take shelter in case a warning is issued, and pay attention to the National Weather Service local news stations because these warnings are vital and will give you life-saving information today. So this has been a severe weather evaluation for October 10th, 2021.